What up, everybody? This is Jay Celine. This is Hollywood Unlocked and Censored. And I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. Yes, and this is Spank Horton, comedian Spank. I got to stop saying comedian Spank. That's my Twitter handle and IG handle. <laughs> I'm so used to saying comedian in front of my name. But, but that's how people address each other now right, these days. They right. address you by your Twitter handle yep. or your IG handle. It's mm-hmm. just like people like, the Melissa Ford. I'm like, there's no the. It's, <laughs> nah, it's, it's, they, it's they really see, just Mel. They see me and just refer to me as the hoe from Hollywood Unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Shout out to Air- United Airlines. You know, that's how I fly, man. Uh, but no, so. Oh, God. So Gio's not here today. So Gio yeah. Army, he created this little army online. Mm-hmm. It's about five people from mm-hmm. Michigan. Okay. Um, you know, he's not here. He's filming a movie somewhere, yes. allegedly. So congratulations. Yeah. He's in Gio. Chicago filming uh, filming a movie and he'll be back. Don't worry about it, everybody. Um, but Spank was. Congrats, kind of, Gio. Yeah, Congrats. Spank, Spank was kind enough to uh, fill in for him. And, uh, well. Yeah, why not? I come through. I adore you. Know. you. Gio, he, I seen him in the club once. I said, yo, man, thanks for filling me when I couldn't make it. I like, wait, wait, brother. It was, almost wasn't. Gio thinks that he started Hollywood on Lockdown Censor, so I let him feel it, so. He'd be all in the comments getting his army riled up against me and Melissa, and it's cute. You know, he's got a lot of time on his hands, I guess. <laughs> Shit. I'd be at the bank. I don't be on YouTube. YouTube. They, yeah, they they love him. They they definitely love him in the comments section. All five from Michigan. So what did you do this yeah. week? Um, God. Well, you know, uh, Dog got impounded. Mm. <laughs> mm. So Daisy's, I mean, Daisy, right? Daisy, yeah. Daisy's gone? Daisy is, uh, I got to pick her up today. Okay. She got it. She got her tubes tied at seven months old. Yeah, they forced me to give my dog a hysterectomy. So we're, so for those that don't know why your dog got impounded, what okay. happened? So she has a dog sitter who I thought was a lovely young lady. And I was grooming her, you know, being a mentor to her and whatnot and you know, Gro- grooming the dog or grooming the grooming babysitter. Grooming her to become something more. The dog sitter. The dog sitter. Oh, so she wasn't like, a dog sitter at first. No, sh- well, who has the title of dog sitter? <laughs> I mean, I'm just the bitch that went to jail with the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like the official title. Like I have a business card here, dog sitter. Sure. Listen, that is yeah. a fucking career. People are walking dogs in New yeah. York City for a living. No, like- I trust me. I get it. She did not have a business card that said dog walker okay. or dog sitter. Okay. However, um, I... It, trusted her with my dog. Mm-hmm. And uh, two thir- you know, I had a dream and I had a dream that something that I loved was gone. And it, w- I woke and up it with- wasn't a man. No, that's, uh, that, we're just going to skate right over that because it's cobwebs and <laughs> was, tumbleweeds Was it a again. woman? That, no, no I, I it's just, been a while since I've been here. It still ain't cobble. Come on. She's weed. still, still straight. <laughs> I'm wow. Still, I'm still straight and I'm still very single. Anywho, um, went out on a Tinder date the other day. It was nothing to write home okay, about. Okay, we'll get into Anywho, that. Anywho, um, yeah. <clears throat> so, so dog's in jail. So anyways, I had a dream that something that I loved was gone, like just, and I woke up with like heart pain. And then I look at my phone and I see eight missed calls at 2.30 in the morning. I'm like, that can't be good. And so I call her and it goes straight to voicemail. And then I call the other number and it's an off duty cop. And I was like, uh, what? Did you f- say, hey, this is Uber driver Melissa <laughs> I didn't, I, no, I was trying to <laughs> implicate myself in any shit. Um, but I said, I was, he, I was like, why were you calling me at 2.30 in the morning? He was like, oh, because the girl with your dog got arrested. I said, Okay, um, where's my fucking dog? And so he tells me where my dog is. And so you don't been, care nothing about her at this point? Not right, to no, no, not right now, I don't. Sheesh. No, no, I know she's not dead. <laughs> she's right. arrested. I've been there five times. I don't give a fuck. You don't get, okay. Um, so I was like, where's my dog? Bitch better have my dog. <laughs> exactly, where's my dog? So I found out where my dog was. I was like, you know, just out of curiosity, I was like, why was she arrested? And he was just like, oh, for a battery. I said, oh, Okay. Wow. All right. And so the only options to get your property back, your dog, your baby, is to either have its tubes tied at seven months old or pay $400. So because she was impounded like some mongrel found on the fucking street, mm. meanwhile, when she gets to the pound, she's in a goddamn travel bag. <laughs> Clearly, and she's microchipped. Clearly, she's not a fucking stray. Who microchipped the dog? Before I bought her, she was microchipped oh, with shit. all my information. Yeah. Yeah. So I am a responsible dog owner. I just get left her with the wrong bitch. Anyways, um, they were like, okay, so here's the situation. Um, she's not fixed. So we're animal control and we control the population of animals. And we don't let any animal out of here without getting spayed or neutered. I was wow. like, she's a six month old $2,000 teacup fucking chihuahua. Okay, I was like, she has an appointment, but let me do this on my own time. Right. And she, they were like, nope, either she gets fixed or she stays on the adoption list or you pay $400 and become a breeder. I was like, mm. all of those options I hate. And they were like, deal with it. I was like. Mm. So you took the dog back? Because I know you've been 
contemplating getting rid of the dog. No. Not really. No, no. So it's sort of she like she frustrates me. So it's sort of like all the times my mother said, "I'm gonna send you as that group home." Eventually, she did, but all the <laughs> threats that led up to it, she said she was gonna get rid of. No, me. it's just she just requires a lot of patience. Mm. She just requires a lot of patience, and sometimes I just don't have it, and it just it's just something I got to work on. So, but I love her to death. And how's she gonna act now that she has her tube tied? I. Hopefully she calmed the fuck down because she was a she was a little humper. Yeah, she she was oh she used to hump the fuck out of her bear. <laughs> I swear it looked like stress relief. Mm, I'm not like a dog lover. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. What about you, Jay? You I'm, I like I like dogs. I don't like I'm allergic to cats. I mean, oh. you would love Daisy. <laughs> no, I'm really allergic to cats. He, like, he loves I'm Daisy. Just, I'm not just allergic to pussy. For those that are, <laughs> that's that's people I, the first I know. I know. I, I saw it in your eyes when I said it. Like this nigga is over there judging me, but it's okay because I ain't seen you in a while. We cool. <laughs> Uh, but I'm allergic to real cats. Real cats. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Pussy, no. pussy too. <laughs> <laughs> you would you would really like Daisy. Oh, Every everybody that meets her loves her. She's like she's a really really sweet dog. And so I wasn't even allowed to see her. Damn. They wouldn't even let me see her. Damn, you can go visit your man in jail before you can see your dog. Exactly. They wouldn't even let me see her. And they were like, the, the next world. day they shipped her off to uh, to a hospital. Got her tubes tied, and I pick her up today. Mm. And cool. I'm just I'm 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 pretty upset. Well, you should do what That's my mom did for me when I got my tonsils taken out. Mm. Take her out for ice cream. Uh, I'm gonna let her rest. She's probably drugged up, uh, okay. but I'm gonna buy her some. Oh, I'm gonna buy her. No, she got her tubes tied. <laughs> that don't mean they still can't rape her. <laughs> Wait, what? She can't have no babies. <laughs> What did he say? He said something about my dog getting raped. I don't want that visual. She's three pounds. Mm. She's, I'm not gonna laugh about. She's maybe the size of a rape. penis. <laughs> huh? She's maybe the size of a penis. No, okay. she ain't the size of no penis. Unless you, in my in, unless in my in my in my dreams, <laughs> that is. The Shout out to Matt Barnes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, oh my so, so I don't know anything about that. Flashbacks right. is wrong. <laughs> Plausible deniability. People Google it. Anywho, <laughs> so Spank, what you do this week? <laughs> oh, this weekend I had shows out in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Shouts out to Raleigh. There's nice. some pretty fine women out there. I didn't know. I, mm -hmm. I've, I've been told that North Ca North Carolina, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. North Carolina has beautiful people. Period. Because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what we're planning something for Raleigh. So yeah, that's what's up. So I had a dope time out. There. Uh, nothing exciting, man. Just was working. That's it. I'm trying to get to the excitement, but I'm still struggling out here in LA, man. It's rough out here. Whew. You and I have something in common. What's that, there? Your friend Kevin Hart was at a party with my friends last night with mm -hmm. Beyonce. Did you get an invite last night? Yeah. No. Dinner at Beauty at Essex. Mm. I didn't get an invite. Wow. So we both have friends who don't fucking care about us. Apparently. Wow. <laughs> Kevin was there. Kevin was there, gave a speech. It was Lenny S's birthday yeah, party. Yeah, Lenny S. I did see that he was having a party. Kev told me he was going to the Clippers game. And that yeah, was and last then summer. he swung by with Beyonce. Wow. Okay. Cool. I see what's going on around here. Yeah. Nice. Kevin, Shayla, Terrence J., all you motherfuckers that was fucked up. Yeah. Nice. Appreciate the invite. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes Diddy. us have to work harder. Miss Diddy LA, that's how I saw it. I saw Miss Diddy. Uh, yeah, she uh, snaps person. everything. Yeah. <laughs> I, saw I saw the Hennessy bottles at One Oak. I saw the outfit from Fashion Over that she had on, bitch. Everything. <laughs> love you, Miss Diddy, but goddamn. Mm. That's the homie. That's yeah, a, I'm gonna I stop right there. That's the homie. Have you eaten at Beauty and Essex? Because I know it's like your favorite restaurant in New York. In New York, not the one in LA yet. I haven't been in town to be there. Oh, yeah, okay. Bowling. Yeah, well, yeah. getting money. He, he's, he's had a way more exciting life than no, us both I put went together. To, I went to New York for five days just for a series of meetings, shopping, mm -hmm. and a little bit of fun. Um, New Yorkers are far more aggressive with people that they see on TV than. LA people. Oh yeah. Why what happened? Walking down the street and I and I had been so stressed out by running into so many fans for, mm. of the show and mm. of Hollywood Unlocked or whatever that I woke up one day and I said, you know, fuck that. I'm gonna be just Jason. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out looking crazy today because I'm done, tired, all this extra, gotta have a haircut, gotta have this nut. So I put on some sweats, I put on some shoes. I don't even think I'm matching. I think I'm wearing the same shirt I wore like the day before. Mm -hmm. I look crazy. Mm. No shave, nothing. And I'm walking down the street and this girl grabbed the shit out of me. And she was like, I need to talk to you right now. She starts running down all this stuff to me. I just said, you know, I don't know who you think I am, but I'm not that person. <laughs> <laughs> Got out of there. <laughs> she was looking at me and I was looking at her. And so she thought I was probably crazy. So she was just like, well, nice to meet you. But I know who you are. I'm like, that ain't me. But I ended up at a strip club. I fell down the stairs <laughs> um, in front of Gucci Mane. Um, oh, I had a drink in my hand, didn't spill it. <laughs> Uh, True alcoholic. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to DJ Cell. Sh showed me a lot of love. And then, um, what else did I do? Went to Coachella. Had mm. a great Coachella experience this mm. time, unlike ours. Yeah. You want to tell yeah. Spank our Coachella experience? Um, really 
we had. Thanks for the invite. I was in town. Thanks for the invite. I I didn't I didn't <laughs> yeah, go this yeah. time. Last last year we had uh, we had bands, mm -hmm. but they were. We were told we had VIP bands. Yeah, but they were actually bands for um, service employees. <laughs> Um, and then, was in the kitchen? No, 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 we didn't even get to the kitchen. We were still in the parking lot because we tried to leave and then they wouldn't let us leave. So I had to fake being pregnant in order to try to get us out of wow. there. But then I got in a fight with the ambulance people when they got there and they said, fuck y'all and left us there until it was totally late. And I almost got shot by police, but I was filming them while they were filming me on the phone with 911. It was a lot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Needless to say, I did not feel, I didn't feel no, the need to rush listen, back to Coachella. This is the funny part. Okay. <laughs> People that don't know Melissa, I've been reading some of the comments. They'll be like, oh, she's a princess. She really is a princess. <laughs> yeah. She's she's there's two personalities. There's either princess or hood bitch Shaquita from the uh, nail shop. I'm a Scorpio. Okay. We are either or. But so Princess Leia, Princess <laughs> Melissa showed up. She had her son dress. She's walking. I think you had braids at the time. Mm -hmm. We go. We think we got these VIP bands. We right. are confident. We are. We are going to the artist section. Right. We went in. We're in line with everybody. Everybody, you have to put your wristband on the thing, and it turns green to get in or okay. red to not get in. Ooh. Everybody's putting their wristband green, 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 green. I'm in front of Melissa, and I put our wristband, and it goes red. And I'm like, oh, this is clearly a mistake because we're VIP. Mm -hmm. Right. You know who the fuck that is. You know. Yeah, let's do it again. We put our wrist up there. They said that she said, no, no. Let me see your band. She goes, you guys are vendors. Go that way. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa was like, fuck this, we're out. We are out. I'm like, what? But so I found the vendor entrance. I'm like, if we just walk, she's like, no, nah, I'm not fucking with no vendor entrance. Mm -mm. So we go back with all the confidence that we're about to leave. We get in the car, we pull up. They're like, sorry, uh, you guys are vendors. You can't leave until 2 a.m. It was like 10 30. Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. Christ. So yeah. the fight began, and the funniest part of it all was. <laughs> <laughs> the vendor who gave us our passes through this third party that told us they were VIPs mm -hmm. wanted a picture with Melissa and I eating their chicken and waffles. Wow. I was like, get the fuck on and give me those fucking chicken and waffles before you go. <laughs> we ate them chicken and waffles. <laughs> we sat there in the dark eating that shit, just laughing. Melissa wasn't laughing, but I was cracking the fuck up. It was so fucking bad. So, did y'all leave at 2.30? Or? Yeah, it was It was like, they let us go like 2.15 or some bullshit mind, like that. Mind you, we drove five hours there. Yeah. In traffic, ah, and then yeah. had to drive three hours back. Yeah, after yeah. waiting about four hours yeah. in the parking lot. Yeah, and feening a pregnancy. Yeah. <laughs> so Melissa, so Melissa goes to the bathroom. I text her. I said, "Bitch, they said the only way we can get out is if you say you're pregnant." She came back holding her stomach. I could not stop laughing because I'm in the middle of arguing with this guy. <laughs> I'm calling him Uncle Tom, you coon, motherfucker, fake ass. And I'm on nine one one on one phone, filming him with the other phone. My friend's over here begging me to stop before I get shot. He's talking about Black Lives Matter. <laughs> They're laughing at me. They're like, this nigga is comedy. So I text Melissa, bitch, come back and say you're pregnant. She comes back. She sucked in as much air as she could, and she's holding her stomach. So I turn around, and I'm looking in the bushes, and I'm dying. Tears are coming out of my eyes. And she's explaining how she's pregnant. So they're like, ma'am, would you like us to call an ambulance? And I'm looking at her like, so she's like, yeah. Yes. I'm like, oh shit, we're going to jail. So I pull her aside. I'm like, what if they want to test you? She was like, they ain't going to pull out a stick and test me for being pregnant in this like, fucking parking lot. Nope. So the ambulance people come, she takes them off, and she gets them to agree to let us out, but we ain't communicating because my phone ain't receiving her messages. Right. I'm like, mad. I turn around, the ambulance guy says, let me talk to you. I'm like, fuck you, you don't need to talk to me, motherfucker. I'm Meanwhile, going Meanwhile, that was the motherfucker that was going to let us go. Right. So he and was, he was just like, see, your friend's fucked up, and now you're both screwed. So I he, was like, so he was like, fuck you, <laughs> fuck the pregnancy. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers can stay in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> so needless to say, this experience at Coachella was completely different. <laughs> okay. Shout out to Odell Beckham, India Love. A lot of people out there showed me a lot of love. Um, and, you know, I see Odell at all the parties. And the only thing I can think about is like this insatiable need for the black community to want him to be gay. And I don't get that. It's the videos and memes they do for uh, Instagram and Twitter. It's a lot of like... But is it gay? Because I, I look at him like a young 24-year-old, exactly. rich as fuck, exactly. successful as fuck. He is living his life. He everywhere he went the whole weekend, he was just living, having a good time. Right, mm. right. It's the it's the young other black people looking. Ah man, he's gay. They're trying to push him away. He's getting women. I'm telling everybody, yo, you can call him gay if you want and try to push him off, but he getting them women. This is jealousy of other guys, young guys. I'm not jealous. I'm cool. Is that some, what do you think? I mean, is it something the because it's like black people are? I feel as black people are just overly consumed with wanting to make people gay. Trey Songz, Chris Brown. You can go down the list. Right. They want everybody to be gay. Right. Mm. But yeah. you don't you don't really hear that about there's some, Spider Man. There's some people that, <laughs> Toby Hawk or Toby Hawk. There's some people that get the gay rumor and there's some people that absolutely do not get the gay rumor. I've never heard you were gay. Uh, you see me looking. Yeah. I'm looking, hold on. <laughs> no, no. Hold on. I haven't heard that either. 
But I feel like when you get to a certain level of success yeah. and when he gets to the Kevin Hart level. I've never heard that Floyd was gay. I've never heard that Kevin Hart was gay. Me neither. I, I heard. And those are two very successful black men. I heard people say Kevin was gay. That's the only really? reason why he getting all the movies. That's what they said. Oh, come the fuck on. And even Floyd has told me he's heard people say he was gay. Really? And wow. Floyd's the most heterosexual friend in my phone book. He, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm number two. I'm like, oh, yeah, you in there too. Like, okay, Sorry. I just want to make. <laughs> Gio, Gio ain't in that. <laughs> Gio not in that group. Gio on like a 42 percenter. <laughs> yeah, Gio was a dancer or something. Ain't he like a background yeah, dancer? He was pop locking yeah, it too. So I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, he, um, he got it. I'm sure he got it. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's Denzel a, never got it. Who? Denzel. Denzel, Denzel oh. never got it. I Will guess, Smith got it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. He did. I guess it's because <laughs> Odell has like a sense of, forgive me for this use of the word, but fuck it, it applies. Flamboyancy. He does. The hair yeah, color. He does. Have the antics on the field. Mm -hmm. The antics off the field. He's just, he's very colorful. And right. he's very comfortable being friendly with his friends. Right. Yeah. So then that's just what it is. Yeah. We took a picture together and I put it on my Instagram and some little bitch for my rant. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say she was a bitch? Yeah, I little think bitch, so. Little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't do nothing because the little bitch went on my page and she said, it's confirmed. Odell must be gay because he's with Jason's sweet ass. And you know what I wanted to say? I didn't say nothing because I've learned when you respond to a hating ass punk ass bitch, mm -hmm. they think that they have power because they yeah. got your attention. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I didn't say nothing. I even delete the bitch. Mm -hmm. I went to her page a few times. I went all down her shit and I found about five good photos of her and her ugly ass family I could have said something about, but I didn't. I just don't understand like why you got to come hate on my page. But see, it's that thing where I thought of, wow. No matter how successful you are, no matter what, there's going to be the speculation people create because they're miserable. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Leave course. Odell alone. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's gay. I've been around him a couple of times. I don't think he's gay, though. Mm. But he do have that flamboyant that you was talking about. So I can see how people... Ah, man, he has gay. gorgeous teeth and gorgeous skin. Jesus there, Christ. There was a video at Coachella. So I went to the Bootsy Bellows party. Shout out to John Tazarian from uh, Wood Group that gave us our passes. Mm -hmm. You know, people are really funny when they got power. I went to the fucking party and I'm waiting in line. Mm -hmm. And I get there early too because mm -hmm. I know how the fuckery they try to play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Arm full of bands. all Got all the bands. VIP everywhere. So I walk up. I'm like, hey, man, can, you know, it's, it's me. I met Bootsy Bellows every week. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, sorry, man. You know, you're not on the list. Nothing we could do. So I, I called the owner. I said, bro, I text him. I'm like, bro, now you know, we we cool. I bring Floyd to all your shit. Mm -hmm. So he calls him. Let Jason and whoever he's with in. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got you. So I went through all that bullshit. Got into the party. I see Odell. Odell gets there like he a little later. But mm -hmm. this is how it's social media works. And mm -hmm. this is just if you could bear with me. Mm -hmm. There was this gay boy in there in a romper. Hey. Not the cutest did you thing. Get, did you get a picture of it? Oh, I'll show you the video in a minute. Okay, thank God. Because <laughs> I need to see a gay he boy in a romper. He was romping his little gay ass all up and down. <laughs> right? Okay. Odell comes compl later with, with Dave O. Mm -hmm. And they, shout out to Dave O. Mm -hmm. So, white dude. So, mm -hmm. they're chilling, whatever. They're moving around. And Odell's dancing all around the mm -hmm. thing. He had a tank top on. He takes his tank top off. He's with a girl and he's with Dave O. Mm -hmm. In the video, all you see is him with his shirt off dancing and the romper and the dude. Romper in boy happened to be in the background. Mm. So that image, people are saying, oh, oh. he's gay because he's dancing in front of that gay boy with the romper. That boy was over here and right. Odell was over here. That mm. boy moved over here because Odell's dancing. It's Odell Beckham. Mm. Right. But I see how images can be portrayed to look a yep. certain way. And manipulated, yeah. And then people just run with it. And it's black mm -hmm. Twitter and black Instagram and black Definitely. Facebook and just black. It's all black. That song. goes there. You go to black <laughs> hates on the whole the gay community and all that. So they just, it's just that, it's like the black community got to have this rough edge image all the time. That's the reason why. But something needs to change with that and it needs to be more like conscious of how how the gay people think and how we think. Like we need to come together and figure it out because that's the only reason how we're going to survive. I'm telling you, we need y'all. For, for, <laughs> like for us to stop getting shot, we need y'all. I'm being no, Like this separatism, yeah. bloods, cribs, like light, dark, mm -hmm. right. like gay, straight. Like I just don't understand it. At the end of the day, I'm going to be, whether I'm big, skinny, light, I'm going to always be light because the nigga ain't never going to change that. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna always like a nigga. But I mean, at the end of the day, like I don't understand the hate and I don't understand as nice as Odell is why he gets it. But nonetheless, he's living his life. So shout out to Odell Beckham. Yeah, good for him. So Melissa, what's going on in the world? Okay, well, I woke up to um, news about Aaron Hernandez hanging himself in his jail cell, allegedly. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the reason why. So for those that don't know who Aaron okay, Hernandez Okay, so Aaron Hernandez, if you've been living under a rock, um, is a former tight end with the, um, the Patriots. Mm -hmm. And he was accused and convicted of first degree murder. 
um, of uh, a gentleman by the name of Odin Lloyd. Mm -hmm. And this happened maybe like last year or two years ago or something like that. So he was given life in, life in jail with the, without the possibility of parole. He was just- And then he was found guilty of two more murders. No, so that was what, he was charged with two more murders, right. um, drive-by shooting that right. happened in 2012. And that is what he was just um, acquitted on, those yeah. charges, um, two first degree murder charges. What's really, really interesting about this is who his attorney is. His attorney is Jose Baez, the same guy who got Casey Anthony off. Mm. That's the guy that just got him off of these two charges. Mm -hmm. And he was about to start the appeals Appeal process yeah. to try to overturn his conviction. So that's why this sounds really weird that the day after he is acquitted, he of hangs, the, himself. He hangs yeah. himself. If, if that's not the definition of, some, of something for somebody to look forward to, I don't know what is. You know what I mean? I was looking forward to his release so we can get his nudes online. I, I ain't gonna lie. And I don't want to disrespect the dead, but right. I was disappointed for different reasons. He morning. he was an attractive man. He was t all tatted up and whatnot. And yeah, he was sexy. So um, he hung himself with the sheets? like what the Yeah, they said that he hung himself. He was found hanging in his cell um, in general population. That was made clear so that it didn't seem like he was in solitary confinement right. where a lot of fucking fuckery goes mm -hmm. on. Um, and yeah, so he was found hanging this morning. And the um, sad part is we put a photo up online of his daughter who was at the trial mm -hmm. when he was acquitted the other day or mm -hmm. last week. Yeah, and she was crying while he was blowing a kiss to her. So mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. like, there's a lot of chatter online right now saying that they don't believe he killed himself. Right. That they believe it was set your up. Your fiance's sticking with you. She's mm -hmm. still your fiance. She hasn't left your side. Your she, daughter, is, your daughter is, is young and wants you to get home. Exactly. Right. And so, you just get acquitted of two murders. Exactly. And you and Jose Baez, who literally came out of fucking nowhere and then comes in and wins the most one of the most unwinnable cases, which is the Casey Anthony murder. By the way, she needs to burn in hell because she killed her daughter. I yeah, I firmly yeah, I, yeah. You don't believe it? It's a little, you question it a little bit? I think that what happened was she just didn't watch her properly and she might've ended up in the pool. Wait, you talking about Casey Anthony or you talking yeah. about the- you talking about Casey Aaron? Anthony. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. I, I think that that's definitely- think a, that's I, I think that that's a huge possibility. But I also, I don't know. It's just, it's it, 30 days later and she's partying it up and stuff like that. Like she's a despicable person. Not 30 days person. later. Mm -mm. When she was missing, she was out partying. No, I know. I know. Right. Oh, oh yeah. 30 days yeah. after. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's right. when those photos came out of her partying. So, and, so and do you think like with all the conspiracy theories online right now that they'll open up this Anthony or this Aaron Hernandez case? No, I don't think so. Damn. Nah, I, I doubt it. So, yeah. un un unless the family, um, requests, and I'm not sure what the legalities are here, but unless the family requests an independent autopsy conducted, like in the Michael Brown case, they hired, um, uh, you know, they, the state found, you know, had a certain findings with his autopsy. The family hired Dr. Michael Baden, who is like literally my idol. He's the former um, chief medical examiner of New York City. And um, they hired him to conduct an independent autopsy. And his findings were completely different than the state. He found that he was in a defenseless position mm -hmm. when he was gunned down. So um, that basically just, you know, the, the, the legal ramifications of that are, was the cop acting, you know, like a cop or right. did he murder him? So I'm not sure what the family of Aaron Hernandez can actually do here. Well, I'm telling you right now, and Spank and everybody watching, if you ever hear I killed myself. You didn't do it. I didn't do that shit. Okay. Same with me. I'm going to say that too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, ditto. Because that's crazy. I mean, I understand probably being in prison will make you want to kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, if I'm in prison and I got HIV, I'm probably going to kill myself. Mm. Yeah, I'm probably going to kill myself. Are you, uh, are you spiteful <laughs> where you'll probably pass it off before you kill yourself? Or? Oh, well, no. <laughs> well, it depends. I said on I, I said on our last show, and honestly, mm -hmm. okay, I have to tell you about something. Okay, here we go. Because I was about to tell a joke, but I have to say, okay, I joke a lot on the show about things, and we like to make people laugh about things that right. are sad, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. mm -hmm. catching HIV these days. I learned a lot in New York on my last trip. Mm. Really? What happened? I didn't catch HIV. No, okay, okay. I didn't. For think For everybody that that was following, like... don't fuck around. <laughs> because I'm still out here in the game. Okay, what did you learn though? <laughs> I'm still an active player. No nope, pun intended. Um, so I meet somebody online, mm -hmm. Instagram, mm -hmm. cause you know, I'm in New York. So I want to see, you know, I, I have an issue sleeping by myself. So if I meet a motherfucker, keep me company. Mm -hmm. I meet a motherfucker online. I'm like, come on, come out to dinner with us. Cause I'm going to try something different. I'm going to have a conversation. 
I did that, I would be dead and murdered in a ditch somewhere. But, but you're Melissa Ford. It is just different. doesn't go down like that. I don't okay. like go they, on. they look at me for loving hip hop like this nigga crazy, so they don't fuck with me like that. Okay, go on. <laughs> so this motherfucker comes so this motherfucker comes to the hotel, meets me and my friends. Shout out to my friends, Lee and Sean. Mm-hmm. So when he gets there, we're walking and talking, and so I'm like asking him questions, like, okay, so tell me about yourself. He's twenty three years old, mm-hmm. young. Mm-hmm. So he starts telling me all these stories about all these sexual escapades he's had. He's like, oh, we're going to this restaurant. Oh, I fucked somebody behind this restaurant before. I'm like, you fucked somebody behind this restaurant? Like outside <laughs> on the ground? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, how long did you know him? He was like, well, I just met him. I was passing by. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Whoa. <laughs> you were passing by and you met him. He said, yeah, he wanted to smoke a blunt. So we started smoking a blunt. And then he was like, yo, you know, when you get down, I get down. So we went behind the thing. We fucked around. I'm like, okay, well, how was that? He goes, well, I was just coming from having sex with somebody else. Jesus Christ. So my friend's like, did you even take a shower? He was like, nah, I didn't have time for all that. Oh, my God. So he starts telling more stories. Then he gets into how he's having sex with these three guys and how it was work because he was being paid for it. So it wasn't that bad. And so I just mid conversation, I go, what is your status? Because I just want to yeah, know. Yeah, and he yeah. was like, well, that's kind of an aggressive question. I'm like, really? What? My nigga? <laughs> After everything you just said, that was an aggressive question. Wow. Like, niggas want to know. Right. He goes, well, I'm undetectable. Which oh, means wow. he was positive, but he's been taking medication. This is the crazy part. Are you ready? Mm. I wasn't ready for it. I'm in the middle of BBQs. If y'all don't know what BBQs is, it's a restaurant in New York where there's a lot of motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And these motherfuckers recognize me and they are trying their hardest to pay attention. So I'm at the table like this. Bring the shit down a little bit, please. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want nobody. I, I want my, so I start talking about casting a, re- a TV show. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm casting. You'd be great for the show. You'd be good. I want them to think, yeah, yeah. I'm here for work. Right. We ain't on no social yeah, motherfucking yeah. shit. I don't know who heard shit. Mm. Okay. This motherfucker tells me, Catching HIV ain't that bad because you get low housing and you get a discount on your medication. And nowadays you only have to take one pill. I said, I am not being sold on catching HIV at dinner. Oh my God. Got benefits for- then he starts to educate <laughs> me. So I said to him, do you tell the guys that you have HIV before? You, like, do you tell yeah. them? He was like, they don't deserve to know. Whoa. It was like, they didn't deserve. They treat me like just a fuck thing. So why do I owe them an explanation on my status? I looked at my friend and I said, I feel your spirit right now. I feel the, I feel whatever I'm feeling. I know you feel, cause I can feel it. Right. We are looking at each other like this shit was, God sent this nigga here to tell me, get your shit together, my nigga. It's okay to be lonely at night sometimes. Right. Hey, Ooh. welcome to my world. He tells me he got raped at 17 years old. Okay. And caught mm. HIV. Oh God. Oh. And so he found out when he went to check into a homeless shelter, cause they had to test him that he was, HIV positive and then he started taking medication but then he starts to tell me how it's easy these days with PrEP and this and that and I'm thinking what the fuck is PrEP? Do you know what PrEP is? No. I don't know what PrEP is. PrEP is is a pill you take before you have sex that stop prevents you from catching HIV. Are you serious? So I came back and I'm putting in a prescription for PrEP. (laughs) (laughs) Let me borrow a few pills homie. (laughs) That's I'm like just in case you get in the passion the condom come off and niggas prepped. Uh, Right. But but what I learned was (laughs) First of all, I was able to really embrace a conversation about HIV and like really listen to the like experience from somebody who's young. And I asked him like, like emotionally, how do you deal with it? Like you're young. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm more healthier than a lot of people that are out there passing around. I know at least I can treat my illness and I can take care of myself. But I don't know why I just told that whole story, but that shit fucked me up and I'm still fucked up. That's crazy. I I usually hear the stories from the other end of the spectrum, you know, from women, you know. So when I was, you know, really big in in um in AIDS advocacy and you know traveling the country and talking to young folks about it, um, I knew uh, two people. Um, one one lady's name was Hadia Broadbent, lovely, lovely young girl. Um, she basically contracted it when she was given um a blood transfusion, you mm. know, when she was very very young. I think like a baby. Um, so she's been living with it her whole life. And she was basically, you know, doctors assumed she wasn't going to make it past, you know, a certain birthday and she's defied the odds. Mm. Um, another uh, experience that I knew about um, was a girlfriend of mine who, like her first time having sex, literally she contracted oh, at that time. Man. I'm like, kill me now. Like that's just the Sheesh. absolute worst. So it's usually, it's women on the receiving end of it, you right. know, not 
running around and kind of feeling carefree like this dude is. But it's typically, and I know this is probably more information than Spank mm-hmm. wants to know, yeah. oh, but God. it's typically Prep. in a gay relationship, the bottom, the receiver women that catch it more yeah. than the people that are, Yeah, which is just, I don't know. To me, I, I, I wasn't ready for that conversation, but I think a lot about like the stuff we stay on, say on the show because we do go far. I go far left. <laughs> <laughs> I go far left at times, but... You know, there's nothing funny about HIV. We make a lot of jokes about, you know, HIV and midgets and trannies mm-hmm. and just fuck shit, you know. Right. But uh, I just, that was life changing. An eye opening experience. That conversation for you. was it's, life it's, changing. I felt it. That sounded really, really deep. I could imagine myself being at the table and just looking at him with like my jaw in my lap. Like, we were, I can't but see, believe but it. But see, we were trying to not do that. So mm-hmm. I said to him, When were you going to tell me that you were positive? And he was like, I haven't, I didn't decide yet. Mm. So you might've fucked him. Oh, no, no, no. Because when he showed up, he didn't, like, no. there was no way, nothing was going to happen. But, <laughs> it was I, I, but I was still just like, wow. Mm. Like motherfuckers is really out here. I'm going to tell you right now. So to your question, I think you said something about what I pass it on. Yeah. Out of spite. Like, what if you- that happened to me, first of all, I would be in prison because I would probably go back and I literally would not be able to handle myself. Mm. If I know that a person knowingly infects me, mm-hmm. right. you give me chlamydia. Okay. I can get over that. <laughs> yeah, a couple <laughs> pills. Buy me a pair, buy me a couple pair of shoes, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> Pay my phone bill, whatever. Burn here, drip there, whatever. Oh, but like God. HIV, like some H- some HPV or some fucking he- hepatitis C, like nah, mm. nigga, you got to die for that. Mm. So prep is it P R E P P R E P? There is a pill, people. If you, I know all the gay people are like this nigga ain't really gay because he don't know. I really am gay, <laughs> <laughs> but I I don't really be in all the you know like I went to Coachella with a lot of my gay friends. Well, they were there. We all hooked up and we all took a picture. And uh, Don Benjamin walked by and goes, "Damn, this is the gayest shit I've ever seen you with." This, it really was like I don't know everything. I'm learning. It's a pill you take before you have sex, and it prevents you from catching HIV. Wow. Okay. When's the last time you were tested? Like eight months ago. It's it's time for me to get tested again. But I haven't been as sexually active as I used to be. I got you. I'm I getting you. old. I mean, eight months is more than a lot more than a lot of people can say. Yeah. In terms yeah. of the last time that they tested, you know, themselves for STDs or HIV. But I did go get tested yesterday for something else because what? I'm in this whole process of trying to learn what foods my body reacts to. In a you got an allergy way. test? Oh, yeah, I heard about that I test. did that food. Food, yeah, food, food uh, allergy test? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, I didn't know it cost $700. Yeah, what are you, what are you allergic to? It's high. I don't know. I just did it yesterday, but oh. I went in with all the confidence, like, yeah, take that shit. It and they were like, okay, it's anything, right? $700. It's I was yeah. like, <laughs> this is a one-time test. <laughs> I'm yeah, slightly allergic to bananas. Slightly. Really? Bananas, huh? Slightly. The That's kind you get off a tree or the kind that... <laughs> No, I'm definitely not allergic to that kind of banana. You know, I realized why I like to masturbate so much. Jesus Christ. This show. <laughs> Press <laughs> HIV yeah, bananas we masturbate. Like, right, I, don't, I mean, it was a natural segue. Right. Okay. okay. But here's the reason why I think that it is something that more, more people need to do. Whenever I talk to my girlfriends and they talk about the fact that they don't have toys, I'm like, you need to go out to Sharper Image and go get a Hitachi. It's quick, it's painless, it's like two minutes and bam, you're done and you don't got to talk to anybody afterwards. It's fabulous. And you want to know why it's awesome? Because it is constant dopamine and serotonin releases in my brain, which create so, a healthy brain. So I wonder if masturbation works. I don't wonder this. And plus it just, keeps the pipes clear down there too. Does masturbation <laughs> have a different effect for women than it has on men? Because with men, if we masturbate too much, it, it makes it more difficult for us to keep an erection. In normal, like a normal sexual situation. Well, yeah, you guys have like a cooling off period. So like when you guys ejaculate, yeah. you guys need some time to get your lives together. Uh, unless you want some pills or something. If you yeah, want some we, pills, we can keep on going. <laughs> so on our way to Coachella, I bought a pill. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing these oops, Anna. <laughs> so we stop at the gas station for snacks because it's a fucking road trip, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So we're in the gas station. We're like, we'll take some Slim Jims. We'll take some Fiji water. I'll take some of this gum. Let me get one of those black rhino pills and a box of Magnum. <laughs> he right, loves right. black rhino. So the guy behind the counter is looking at me. I go, bro, get the pill. Like, I'm serious. So we're getting the pills. We're getting the, the condoms. And my friends that I'm with are looking at me. And I'm just like, listen, this. And I tell the guy, the, mm-hmm. I say, have you ever? He's an Indian guy. Have you ever used this pill? He goes, no, no. What is that? I go, if you want your dick to stay hard for seven days and fuck everything that comes in front of you, take this fucking pill, bro. I swear to God, I make your dick hard. 
So as I said, it make your dick hard. The Mexican guy who works at the gas station is coming out. <laughs> so he looked at me. I'm like, it'll make your dick hard too. And he's like, wait, what are we talking about? I go, this pill, these condoms. So long story short, this big ass Mexican dude comes in behind me. I'm doing all this talking. He's sitting behind me. So I turn around. He's like, just handle your shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> My friends lost the fucking pill in the condoms. I'm like, damn, I paid like $18.99 for all of that. Wow. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, you Rhino. have no idea what's in Black Rhino, do you? I don't. Do you? No, I don't. I don't care. But I will check it out. I know what Black I know what taking that pill gets that dick in. <laughs> Anything it wants for seven days. You be laying in bed, dick be hard for four hours. You be like, damn, you start talking it down. You start getting ice packs. Shit don't work. <laughs> Really? Yes. It's a cheaper Viagra. Yeah, and a lot of women, they, they back up off of that. They know when you're on a pill now. They know. You know who I heard is one of the initial investors of Viagra? Oh. Quincy fucking Jones. Oh, really? Wow. Mm-hmm. That's, I, I could be mistaken, but I heard it from a pretty good source. I don't want to picture Quincy Jones with an erection. <laughs> Yeah. Like, do you, let's kids just, that, do you just, know how many kids let's, he has? I don't give a fuck. I just want to think about Thriller. Quincy Jones walking around with a hard dick he in his hand. He got a whole compound. How many kids he got? A, a lot. I didn't know that. Oh, no, so me and Melissa go to yeah. Puffy's house and fucking Quincy Jones is sitting in the corner with Mary J. Blige. And me I and stayed her, on the other side of the room. And we're completely underdressed <laughs> for this event. So I don't wrap myself in the curtain. <laughs> oh, God. Hoping Puffy doesn't walk by. And we go outside and Puffy comes and sits right next to us looking like a million dollars. I'm like, bro, I didn't know I was coming to your house. Yeah. <laughs> like, so what else is going on? Um. Okay, so I know you're not a basketball fan. Me, not mm -hmm. so much. Oh, Definitely condolences to um, Isaiah Thomas. His sister passed away. Yes. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, In a car accident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually um, text Isaiah and sent him well wishes. So. Yeah. That's, it's really sad. He's, ugh, it just broke my heart to just see him crying on the, on the sidelines. On the sideline, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I called Floyd. Him and Floyd are best friends. So I called Floyd and he hadn't seen the video. But I was just like, you, know, you may want to check on But he had already talked to him, of course. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so um, condolences go out to um, Isaiah and his family. Um, and condolences to Carmelo and his millions because he about to kiss them motherfuckers goodbye. You think, Lala, oh. what happened? So go ahead. Okay, well, if you have been living under a rock, um, <laughs> <laughs> they've split up amidst rumors that he got um, another woman pregnant. And uh, people are saying that it's a stripper and whatnot, but she, apparently she's not a stripper. Apparently she's got a master's degree. Let me tell you something about these quote unquote educated women with master's degrees. That don't mean that you don't have your fucking home moments. So stop it. Okay. She's, if this is in fact what happened, she still went to bed mm -hmm. and got impregnated by a married man. Huh? And that's. And mm, women defense. Yeah, go men ahead. Men speak some strong game to I, throw I get, you off. Look. I get it. It's Carmelo Anthony. Right. He's and we rich. Lie. He's rich. He's fit. There is no lying. Well, it, me, and we my separated. me and my wife, it's just a situation. No, we separated. Okay. I, I got my own crib. Like, I, it's, it's a lot, man. I, no, no, women no. get manipulated. From, from, I get no, no. From the standpoint of a woman, you want to believe that shit. Okay, she wanted to, if that's okay. if that was the story, you want to believe right. some dumb shit like that, okay? <laughs> he's rich, he's famous, he's married. Well, listen, Amber Rose posted a photo yesterday, a meme, a meme saying that the VIP passes at Coachella weren't good enough. So next year, she knows how she's going to get her artist bands. And it was a picture of two girls sucking a dick that she covered up with Coachella bands. Wow. So I, say, oh, I saw that. <clears throat> so I posted that and I said, hoes be winning. I say all that to say that girl, these women now, I'm telling you, it's a whole different world that we live in. The come up is real. Yeah. Right. And we posted a meme yesterday on Hollywood Unlocked with Carmelo Anthony standing behind Derek Fisher. I saw and that. And he was looking at that. Derek Fisher and he said, when your marriage is ending and you realize who's going to be in La La's <laughs> inbox immediately, <laughs> mm -hmm. that wasn't the funniest part. Mm. The funniest part was, last night I get a text from Matt Barnes and he was like, you're crazy as fuck. But I'm looking around and he put the eyes, so I'm looking around thinking he's at the yeah. restaurant that I'm at. I said, what are you talking about? He said, the meme that you guys just posted on Hollywood Unlocked. I go to Hollywood Unlocked and see the meme. Matt put his eyes under the meme because, mm -hmm. you know, Derek Fisher was fucking mm -hmm. his girl. Mm -hmm. Shit was hilarious. That is funny. That is funny. Um, no, there's also that <coughs> meme circulating where there was there, that infamous picture of where Rihanna is standing in front of Mello, but she's looking over her shoulder. And oh, she's yeah. got like this super ridiculous, seductive look on her face. I mean, she looks like Rihanna, gorgeous. And he's looking at her like he is high off the henny <laughs> and what I would do to you, honey. And I was like, well, Melissa's definitely gotten good at it because the one thing that Melissa has said to me now, like, I'll try to hook her up with somebody. I ain't gonna say no names. French, mm, Monta mm, French mm, Montana. Mm, mm, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> French get around. God damn. Mm. But she knows these guys before they show up. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Like she has this fucking skill, which where it's like, I just try to see everybody as being genuine. You right. know, I see flow riders as flow rider. She she knows flow rider on a whole different level. Mm-hmm. Sure do. So Very when I try to tell her like French is a good guy or. I'm sorry, ASAP Rock is a good guy. Whoever. Right. She's not turned on by the image of who these people are right. because she knows men. Industry men. Is it industry men or just men, period? It's usually, it's just men, period. You know, and it's like. Uh, but it's also being hard. Be, it's hard being you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, let's just say that I have a certain, I've, you have to have a certain kind of guard up as being a woman in this industry, just being mm-hmm. a woman in general, you know? And so. You just don't, it's not that easy. No, to but just, you said some real shit. Mm. You said the men don't want to be with me. They want to be with the image of Melissa Ford. And yeah. you know what's real? All mm. of my friends that know we know mm-hmm. each other and mm-hmm. know the podcast, even my cousin mm-hmm. this morning, mm-hmm. talking about tell Melissa I'm in love. They do look at you as Melissa Ford. Yeah, no, they look at me like that. They don't that. look at you as having a heart, having no, a feeling. They, look, they look at me as that one dimensional chick that was up on their wall and she's fabulous, but she's not really me. Like I get down off of the fucking whatever I was sitting on, all sexy and shit like that. And I'm just, I, I got a yeah, splinter just, in my I, ass yeah. and shit like that. You know, I'm like, and I got a one pee. video you did. I can't remember who video it was, but you had your back on the wall, but the, the, the arch, it was crazy. I yeah. think it was- uh, My arch is crazy. Yeah, the arch was crazy. It's, I can't remember what video it was, but it was- It's super duper But now crazy. that you got this though, I think people starting to see a different side of you though. No, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. no, I mean, it's it's good that, you know, my, my personality, is kind of like being discovered and fleshed out and mm-hmm. I'm becoming three dimensional, you know, but uh, it was always just kind of frustrating just being seen and nobody really understanding right. what that was like to where, you know, trying to explain to people why it's hard for you to date because people think that they're dating the image they have in you. They want you to be who they think you yeah, are. Yeah. And when they find out that you, nobody can live up to that level of expectation, you can't, you know, it, right. the disappointment and whatever comes with it, it just, it just sucks. It just sucks, which is why I spend a lot of time alone. Um. So, 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 <laughs> we're ta- so we're talking about Carmelo and Lala. Do you think Lala is going to actually leave Carmelo? Well, because I like them together. Like I love too. Lala and Carmelo and you're friends with, you're friends with Poe. Who's we're, close to- I mean, I, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool with Lala. I'm really good friends with Poe, which is, you know, like one of her best friends. Um, and I, you know, actually sent Poe a message. I was like, you know, tell her I'm so sorry. She, I feel terrible for what she's going through. And, you know, hopefully, look, we have circum- circumstances like Kobe Bryant, mm-hmm. like Dwayne Wade, mm-hmm. uh, like Ludacris, mm-hmm. where they, the women, have, they've forgiven them right. and they went back. You I don't, I don't want to see that family break, broken up. I love Carmelo and Lala together. Yeah, yeah. and I don't I don't think of Lala as the girl that wants to come up off of her marriage. Like I look at her like if she no. really want if she really is over it, she will leave. Yeah, but I hope she's you know I hope she sticks through. To and, me, to me, she invest. She was a hundred and fifty thousand percent invested in this relationship, in this marriage, and making it work. You know, I mean, she wrote a whole book based around it, the love playbook. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, that was being that's being turned either into a TV series or a movie or whatever the case is. So, yeah, I mean, the hopes are that they can get past this, but this is, it's not just infidelity. If, in fact, this girl actually is pregnant, pregnant. with his child, that's a whole other level of acceptance that is going to be forced upon her that no woman should ever, ever, ever have to deal with. But unfortunately, too many women do have to deal yeah, with it. She's a strong woman. She can do she it. She is. She, she can she do is. it. <clears throat> so my yeah. barber has a client in San Diego <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that he goes to every Wednesday, right? Uh-huh. So last night I said, yo, bro, yesterday I said, can you cut me? He goes, oh, I can't cut you Wednesday because I got to go. You know, I got that one client that I have to go to in San Diego where he spends the whole day. I said, my nigga, do you have another family? Mm. <laughs> My father, he had seven kids out of wedlock. Mm. He was always going somewhere for right. another client or something. For a whole day. Mm. Nigga owned a liquor store. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Yo. Well, my, I was looking in other cities. Wait, so, I have so a story. He got me an appointment. If you believe it, <laughs> I have a story. So in my real estate days, I had a real estate partner who told me the story had happened to them. Um, showed a couple a house. Um, and... You know, it was a husband and wife and whatnot. White husband was a pilot or some shit like that or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seemed like, you know, they didn't, did, did the white, he never saw the wife again, but the husband seemed to buy the house, you know? Um, and so six months later, he runs into the wife in like the supermarket or something. Uh. He was like, oh my God, how do you love the house? How's uh. it going? And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? We mm. never bought the house. I haven't seen you since the day you showed it. He was like, Okay. 
He had bought the house Drossness. and moved his other family in. Yep. Mm-hmm. Damn. That was how Drossness. she found out. This is what I respect about Floyd. Floyd has all his relationships. They all know about each other. Everybody understands it's one happy family. Mm-hmm. I want to get to that level where I can have the same thing. Of course, we're going to have <laughs> a harem. And we're going to have prep everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> in, pe- in dishes all over the coffee tables. Did you eat your green beans and your prep? <laughs> I don't think it just takes money either with Floyd. I don't think it just takes money to have that. I think you got to have a good talk game with women too, man. But you like what I say with the manipulation thing. N- no, I will say, and Floyd will be very open about it. It mm-hmm. does take some level of money too because he does take care of all of them. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. You definitely. know, like I, I feel like if you can take care of, if you can afford it all, mm-hmm. then you should be able to do it all. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. how it is in Africa. Mm-hmm. What? No, no like, and, and in other Middle Eastern yeah. countries. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I was like, wait, what? Oh, like, I, okay, I get see, it. See, the problem with black people, it. we've been we've been ripped of our heritage mm-hmm. and we have forgotten where we come from. Yep. We come from little huts where we had a bunch of motherfuckers running around with kids. <laughs> yes, sir. Now we got a bunch of motherfucking kids running around <laughs> and we only got one person we could be with. It's fucking reverse because of slavery. Slavery has fucked us all the way up. Yeah, we, okay, so we're not gonna go off on we that. Gotta subject get back. Because we, we gotta get back. So I promise you, when I get rich, because mm. it's coming, I'm gonna claim it. There's going to be a whole bunch of motherfuckers at Dash Radio sitting in the background. Y'all going to be like, damn, we got an audience. No, nah, that's my ride. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the gay Floyd Mayweather running around L.A. Oh, okay, well, in other baby-making news, right. um, Drake is has allegedly gotten um, a woman um, impregnated. Well, IG model. Yeah, an IG model. She really isn't a model, though. <laughs> She's not cute at all. She looked gonna... like the female Aerie Spears with, oh. with extra Vaseline on her face. <laughs> well, we don't know if this is in fact true. She claims to be pregnant. She also claims that he has started threatening her. Well, there's a message that's gone out where she was damning one of her friends that mm-hmm. she was just doing it to get her followers up and she didn't give a fuck. She was getting her coins. Wow. What, the pregnancy or just or the- or She just had made the, it up. Oh, that made up the pregnancy. To get her social media numbers up. So she, she was like, girl, they follow me. I don't care. They're mm. like, they're going to hate you when they find out. She's like, I'm getting my coins. I don't care. Wow. wow. This whole world of social media. Shout out to Drake because he's still a real nigga. You know, I saw him the other day at the Neon Carnival at Coachella walking to the porta potty. Mm. Nice. Well, <laughs> oh, he's such a good Canadian boy. No, because you, you, you know, as you boys, you guys can fucking whip it out wherever you want. But he went to the porta potty. I'm sorry. If, when I, if I was Drake status rich like that, you got to carry me to find a toilet. I'm not walking <laughs> in a porta potty. They had to carry me to find a toilet when we were at Coachella. I was not walking around that bitch. <laughs> Princess Melissa came out that night. Right. So was, shout out to Drake. Yeah, so hopefully that situation works itself out. And uh, Oh, it's worked out. It sounds like it's worked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's been discovered. We mm-hmm. put that on Hollywood. Yeah. What was her Poor name? Thing. Layla Lace or something like that? I don't know what that thing's name was. but I vague. A waist train of queen, I'll tell you that, because everything up here is heavy and anything down <laughs> yeah. there is heavy but this. So And she was shiny in a motherfucker. <laughs> I felt like she got in a fight with Vaseline. Wow. Her and oh, Jermaine. Crisco. Oh, she yeah. with Jermaine Jackson hair, one or the other. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they, you know, speaking of Jermaine Jackson, little Blanket. <laughs> I heard little Blanket is living up in Calabasas by his motherfucking self. He's only 15. Wow. In a seven-bedroom house with staff. He has I staff. wonder, does he feel like he needs to change his name from Blanket to, I don't know, anything? John? I can't see Michael sitting Paco. in the room saying, just name him Blanket. Yeah. Why? Because you want... Um, okay, I was going to say a joke. Blanket immunity. I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say you just lay on the motherfucker, but he ain't 18 yet. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Um, I don't know why you name your cl- kid Blanket. Blanket has looked angry since he was born. But they say he's living in a house in Calabasas by himself with his, st- with, with his staff. And all he's, he does is eat candy. I got to see... I haven't seen pictures of him in a long time. I've seen the daughter, though. He looks like sister. this. The whole time. Yeah. Mm. He actually looks like Michael. He does. He you know? actually looks like Michael. Was it from the same woman, Debbie Rao or Roe or whatever? The, the I had Paris all my memory of everything Prince. Michael before, but that shit is gone. All yeah. the child molest, the Louis Farrakhan's, the death, the doctor. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. I just want to remember off the wall, Michael, thriller, black, white, Michael. I, I'm cool with all right. that. But On another else. note, Paris Jackson is killing the game. She looks yeah, amazing. She's beautiful. She does. I love, I just, she's on the cover of some magazine right now and just looking kind of like Madonna. Shout out to, but, shout out to Janet the Scammer. No. <laughs> Fuck that. What? Did you? Okay. So hold on. So in, no, let's talk about yeah, it. So no. in, in the news, um, Janet Jackson reportedly split from her husband. Why? I don't know because he I, is. I know why. How, why? 
her prenup said if she stayed married for five years, she yep. would get five hundred million. So now hold on one hold second. On. Oh. She had a baby two months ago. Okay. And she filed for divorce five years and two months into the okay. relationship. So hold mm-hmm. on. One of her very best friends launched into a tirade on Instagram. Janet has friends? Yes, she oh. does. And basically said everybody is fucked up for believing that she would even do something like that, marry a man strictly just for the money, and that he they haven't been married for five years and two months, that they've only been married for four years. So he's hmm. saying that this $500 figure came out of nowhere and the fact that everybody's calling her a gold digger and all this other shit is bullshit. I'm not calling her a gold digger. I'm calling her Janet the Scammer. <laughs> <laughs> so I put a picture up of Joanne the Scam- of Janet Jackson and it was a four picture square. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's Janet turning it's into Joanne a- the Scammer. <laughs> and Joanne the Scammer liked it. <laughs> so it's approved. Right. Janet the Scammer. I'm mm. just really confused because not only did the reports come out that they're separating, but then he releases some note to her, like this love letter to her, basically saying, I love you. I will always love you. You know, we'll be together in eternity, blah, mm. blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, so I'm dying to know what happened. That was a note to say, bitch, I'm coming to kill you. Mm. But I mean, at the end of the day, I think she looks. The Jacksons are historically a private family. Mm. But now that you've been so public with this marriage and this baby, you need to tell us what the fuck happened. Yeah, I agree. Because I'm going to tell you until Janet, the scammer, Miss Jackson, are you nasty? Ho ass scammer. (laughs) Yo ass is a scammer. So here's the funny thing. Like a month and a half, two months before you know, the news broke that she'd, um, that they were getting a separation. I saw a picture of them and I just read the body language. I was like, any money, there's going to be a separation announcement in wow. like, just within the next six months. So you saw it. I saw it. I could see it in the body language. Mm. I could just see it. He looked like he was just fucking over her in the picture. And she's <laughs> looking like, you better get your ass back here, motherfucker. And, and hey, lo guys, and behold, they used to have a lot of wives. So he, he, fine. Have one. he is so fine. He's going to be okay. But I wonder what his family and what his religious people are thinking, because you don't marry someone to get divorced when you're right. in the Middle Eastern culture, yeah. right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like till death do us really part. Mm. Uh oh. Yeah, well, let's keep okay. an eye on Janet. Somebody on YouTube said that we catch our guests last minute. We literally caught our, our guests right now outside the door. <laughs> Zoe Williams in the building. Hey, hey what, up? what up? What up? What up? What up, Zoe? Okay, so What's happening? Hollywood Unlocked, we try to stay current with trending topics. And, Jeez. you know, I, what I love about Drake and Coachella coming out during Future Set is he got the crowd hype. Like, skin niggas is winning again. Mm-hmm. Oh, right boy. when I thought that the, you know, Kevin Hart's of the world and the Spanx and all the dark brothers out there were winning, <laughs> Zoe Williams jumped. Jump right into the boxing arena. <laughs> and shut us down. You shut us down. For okay, me. so I am literally like, you know, just confused like the rest of our audience. So play by play. So l- let me set, what let happened. Me set it and up. And I didn't know you had hands like that from what I'm understanding. Let me really set well. it up and then I will let him okay. take over. Okay. So I'm scrolling through the diabetes section and I see Aerie Spears. Wow. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, oh. He, Aries Spears is a comedian that used to be funny. I remember. Okay, so wow. he's Shit. doing a radio show with Zoe and Corey Holcomb. And they got into a heated debate over something that I'll let him explain. And Zoe was not having it. And then the Zoe I knew from the foxhole, from the Jamie Foxx radio show <laughs> shit, turned into the money team shot the floor. <laughs> and it got real. And Zoe warned him. He gave him many opportunities. But Aries was talking. And then I'm going to let Zoe tell you what happened. I, I had to, you know, I had to let him know that uh, you're not going to continue to disrespect me live on the air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I didn't really hit him. I missed him more than I hit him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw it, but <laughs> it still connected the body. So it yeah, counts, I just wanted to him to system. feel like in a moment I'll be on your ass, nigga. Don't. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> in a how, nanosecond. But how did a conversation with three comedians get that real? <laughs> Because, like, if I was talking shit to a comedian, I think we just talking shit to each other. The next thing I'm laying on the floor, a nigga to knock me out. What happened? Well, How did it get there? He was hella disrespectful and belligerent the whole interview, mm-hmm. yeah. telling motherfuckers to shut up. Now, mm-hmm. one thing about radio, mm-hmm. you never tell the another co-host to shut up. Mm-hmm. Why? Because the audience doesn't like the way it sounds. Yeah, they don't. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. one of those buzzwords, like... Mm-hmm. Right. Shut up. What? what Plus, as a guest. Mm-hmm. Plus, as a guest. He was a guest. He was a guest. Right. Mm-hmm. So telling a, a, yeah, a co-host to shut up. And he mm-hmm. did that for two hours. Mm-hmm. And then he was touching me. 
He just kept putting his hands he up. He kept. I'm sorry. I'm just uh, want to show a little how he was doing. I don't want to get the uh, three. This piece, is though. a demonstration. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> he just kept. Hey man, he come just on. kept oh, touching. Man, nah. That's oh, annoying. He kept doing it the whole two hours. So, yeah, so Zo tells him, my nigga, you going to stop disrespecting me. <laughs> and he he warned him several times. And then he said what he was going to do if you did something. Mm. And yeah. then what happened? <laughs> See, that's what motherfuckers get twisted. I can cuss, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what motherfuckers get twisted. They think if you articulate. Mm-hmm. They think if you're light skinned, mm-hmm. that you're somehow soft. Man. And I've never been put in a position to where I had to show him, like, oh, intellect doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Reason right. doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Right. I know what you'll respect. You'll, you'll respect some aggression. <laughs> so I showed him a little aggression and he, and he covered up. He, I'm like clear an minded. Dish. Yo, you need to make a t shirt out of that. Jesus. I'm clear minded. Verbatim. Yo, but, but the greatest part about it is that I could tell Zoe still wanted to stay in control because he hit him with a quick elbow. I didn't let, I, I could have, I've didn't been fi- training. You, you didn't fire on him the way you could have. I've been training for two years, kickboxing, and Ooh. I could have just. Straight punched him to sleep, right. but I didn't want to hurt him. Mm. I knew he was a, a little inebriated. As soon as he walked in, mm-hmm. he was like, "This fuzz, Tang, this Tang Ray, this fair, right?" <laughs> Tang Ray is the and one then that he, will make you, you go know, to jail. Right? The motherfucker started dating the bottle. He had the bottle with him. <laughs> Kept a bottle with him the whole show. The whole show we had to hide it at one point. So he was hogging the liquor too. He was hogging the liquor. I mm-hmm. don't drink, mm-hmm. so you know that was all right with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he was disrespectful. So yes. after you put hands on him, how did the show end? Like, did somebody have to keep carry him out, break, take him out, or did he just leave? He got scooped up off the ground <laughs> by Corey. <laughs> I mean, because you know, yes. you know, there's intensities, there's aggression on you, and and he's kind of heavy, so yeah, he went yeah. to the floor, just by inertia, <laughs> and took him to the floor. <laughs> so, Ke- uh, you know, Corey picked him up and walked him to his car. Okay, that's hilarious. Have you heard from him since? Like, has he reached out? Like, I apologize, I was out of line. Radio silence from him. He tweeted. Mm. He tweeted though. He, he tweeted called, once yeah, after, one, the show. after the show. What did he what say? Did he say? Uh, he said he got snuffed. He got snuffed by a bitch radio nigga, some shit like that. Okay, well let me say, if you talking shit, punch. let me tell you something. <laughs> if you talking shit to a motherfucker and it's getting tense, you gotta swing before they do. You know that. <laughs> yeah. First off, if you first off you watch the video, mm. it's clear warning. I mm. took off my glasses. Mm-hmm. Yep. I pushed my chair back. Back. <laughs> And then I told him, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and there were there was no laughter, no smiles. <laughs> no laughter. There was a smile on Corey Hope's face, though. He was, Not, well, no, Corey was eating that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Corey was like, I want these niggas to fight. Because <laughs> Corey don't like him either, though. Corey don't like him either. I mean, I got so many calls. I ain't going to put nobody out. But I got so many calls yeah. from comedians. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you did. Like, that man. That we're happy that you laid him out. You. Yeah. This mm. motherfucker's been a jerk for years. For years. That's what I heard. Mm. Years. I didn't even know him like that. Because mm. mm, he kind of faded to black. Not no, to, pun, no intended. pun intended. Exactly. This is funny to me because. <laughs> that wasn't a colorism statement. No, not, no, not at all. <laughs> we, <laughs> we never get accused <laughs> of that on this not show. Not at all. <laughs> What's funny to me is he came to one of our shows with Kevin Hart. Came to our show, talked to Kev for a good half hour. Yo, what I got to do to get to the, back to that level where I want to be? And Kev was honest with him saying, yo, man, you got to come with some new material. Yeah. And maybe Follow- get off the fucking sauce. Right. But then the following week, he goes on radio. Yeah, Kev got writers. And we like, whoa, dude. Wow. What? How you going to come to this nigga? That's then- because he's sucking on the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Drunk nah, niggas do that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But exactly. you know what? I took responsibility. Okay. You know, because okay. he pulled me out of character. Right, right. And there are a lot of people around the world that respect my opinion, mm-hmm. right. respect my insight. Mm-hmm. True. So I True. had to apologize. But publicly. sometimes yeah. you got to let a nigga know. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he got the memo. No, he got it. <laughs> <laughs> the email, the memo. Sign, the sealed, time, and delivered. The memorandum was delivered. <laughs> <laughs> so we should invite him on the show and say, was it the liquor or the hypertension that got you a little out of control, my nigga? <laughs> Damn. I haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> mm. he, must- he, he, he hit me on the street it's a hate crime i'm a claim gay that's the only time i claim gay shit <laughs> motherfucker try to pull up on me nigga because i was gay trust me i know how to kill a nigga's career you, get out of it. you mad because my homeboy sucked your dick and now you're trying to tell me. wow <laughs> they don't fuck with me that's why niggas see me and be like i'm gonna go the other way <laughs> but so what i loved about it was for light skin niggas like i feel like especially with me people will test me and say oh he lies gonna he gay first of all i'm from stockton california i don't give a fuck if you don't know mm. where that's from stockton. google the shit it's yeah. real mm. yeah and uh, I like it when niggas like, 
<laughs> my, my, my dark skin homies will play me and be like, yo, nigga, shut your li- Drake ass up. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. Keep playing, nigga. The Unabomber was yellow. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the news made him white, nigga, but the nigga was yellow. <laughs> well, and I think another great thing that came out of this is people need to be realistic about the people they hold on a pedestal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, uh, politicians, preachers, coaches, mm-hmm. you know, everybody is flawed and everybody has limits. Mm -hmm. So just because your life is a little whack, you can't idealize somebody else and be like, oh, they're going to be this perfect Mm -hmm. symbol I'm going to hold up. Mm -hmm. Listen, you know, I'm a man first. And at the end of the day, I got kids. How am I going to go home to my 17-year-old daughter? And she's like, you've been getting punked a lot, my (laughs) nigga. (laughs) So there's certain, there's a boundary, you know, that needs to be respected. And Mm -hmm. and he crossed it several times. If Aerie Spears is listening and you want to get carried away again, bring your ass on our show. (laughs) 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 Nigga, we carry bottles and fucking tasers. (laughs) But anyway, nah, it was good seeing you, though. Appreciate it. This is our moment in politics, so. <laughs> Bring out your tissue and beg for Obama because here it goes. Mm-mm. Yeah. Okay. So we just had Easter weekend and, um, you know, you saw Donald. Donald Trump is just, you know what he's like? You know who he's like? Do you remember um, Back to the Future? That character Biff. Oh, yeah. Biff was <laughs> such a fucking douchebag. Yeah. That's Donald Trump. So this kid hands him a Make America Great hat to sign. He signs the hat and throws it into the crowd. Mm. Like he's such a dick. <laughs> like... <laughs> He still thinks he's a celebrity. He's yeah. just such an asshole. And then Melania has to like nudge him to remind him to put his hand on his heart during the playing of the national freaking anthem. So I saw somewhere online where they were like, it took an immigrant to remind him to be American. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. And it's true. Melania is now going to be moving into the White House. So she will no longer be costing taxpayers like $500,000 a day to stay in New York. Do you think she's happy? No, I don't. I think she's fucking miserable. I think she's screaming through her eyes. Do you think she's Help abused? Help me. <laughs> uh, no. Abuse is those tiny little hands touching you. <laughs> Yuck. So you think he put hands on her? No, I, he can't hit anybody with those tiny little hands. He can try. <laughs> He can, you can you can slap him up. Yeah, he can. Listen, <laughs> listen. You may not be able to formulate a full punch, but you right. can definitely slap a bitch. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think that she's being abused. I think that she didn't ask for this position. I and I think that she's overwhelmed by it, and I don't think she wants it. And I think that there would have been a divorce within about a year and a half um, if he had not become president. And now she's trapped. Mm. That's just what I think. But I could be wrong. Side note: On the plane to New York, I watched the movie Jackie. Oh yeah, such a good movie. I couldn't get through it. It was a good movie, but you but just, she was really good. It was Natalie Portman playing right. Jack. But, but I, I look at like, I look at our first ladies like Jackie, mm-hmm. and Michelle Obama, mm-hmm. and I just don't like Melania is not that girl for She's me. Not that. Yeah. Melania, sorry, my chair's fucked up. Um, Melania wasn't prepared for this because she did not have a husband who had a life in politics prior to this. True. There's grooming that is involved True. in this. You know, you usually go start from like, you know, kind of like local government to state level. There's like steps. Right, steps he skipped every step mm. to become the president of the motherfucking United States. And the craziest part about reality it is show less, president. Less than two, less than a hundred days in office, we've bombed two countries already. No, did you see? Um, <laughs> did you see the news where he couldn't even keep it straight as to where he'd even drop the motherfucking bomb? Yeah. I alternative can't. facts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God that bitch has not been on TV. Kellyanne Conway, I got tired uh, of seeing her. She hurts my eyes. But you know, since we last talked, Sean Spicer went out and actually compared the gassing in Syria to the lack of gassing Hitler used in the <laughs> no he basically he basic no he basically said that Hitler never used um chemical warfare in the hall during the Holocaust and he said this on Passover <laughs> I can, uh, <laughs> Yo, but like gonna... I, I can tell you this is the worst reality show I've ever watched <laughs> it really is because I don't it's give a real. fuck who you are it's the you, most real listen, reality show I don't care show. if you're Republican or Democrat or fucking alien Everybody looking at us like, this is some crazy shit. Yeah, they can't believe it. I asked this question on one of our last shows. Like, does he have, do do more people have to participate in the launch of nuclear weapons other than Donald Trump? Because if not, we are really fucked. 
I'm counting the days. I have a calendar that reminds me how many more days left we have because he won't be elected twice. Uh, yeah, no, we no. Can, no we you know can't. they changed the rules in the in Congress to get his uh, his um, Supreme Court nomination through. But here's the crazy: they changed the voting, they changed the numbers. Yeah, so wow. that way they can stack so just, against it. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw that. But here's the funny thing: Neil Gorish, who is who he appointed to the Supreme Court is the only person that he has appointed in, within his administration that I actually agree with. He's the only one. Everybody else is is woefully like not prepared not for prepared. their job function. Well, I, I, like, I there's like, only one issue Betsy I have with the- DeVos. The, mm -hmm. Only one thing I have with the judge. You know, my background before I got into- ratchet rack record recklessness is mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. ratchet recklessness with this show and his brand is um i worked in labor for 10 years mm -hmm. i worked with the labor union he mm -hmm. cited against employees employee rights so i don't know i mean to me you know we have a court now that's stacked against those of us that have left-wing thoughts or have liberal thoughts and we are in some really crazy times yeah and the fact that north korea is like setting up for nuclear attacks yeah. the fact that they just saw russian uh, fighter jets over Alaska. Yeah. The fact that we have yeah, you want to be all buddy buddy with Putin. Yeah, well, we're about to get our asses fucking to handed to us by Putin. <laughs> well, it looks Putin. like China's on our side. <sighs> For how long? I just one thing that's interesting. People hated Obama. The one thing that you had around the world was a lot more. Uh, there was a lot more. Well, we had a lot more class to mm -hmm. other yeah, countries. Of course, but there, it was, and we had allies. It, it was mm -hmm. calm around the country, yeah. around the world. Yeah. Now it's just like there's so much unrest everywhere you go. Yeah, no, we had allies, but he what inside of two days of taking office, he fucking hung up on the uh, vice the the prime minister of Australia ally. You're mm -hmm. making a fucking enemy with you know out of the with the, the Britain, president. The Britain, Britain, the Parliament said that they don't want him to come and visit their country. <laughs> And said Jesus we should Christ. tell him not to come. Like, <laughs> and they said he does not deserve to walk in the history and the footsteps of Nelson Mandela. Mm. No, no, he doesn't. He let, doesn't. Me, let me just say this for those of mm. you that aren't. Let's take a moment. Okay. Donald Trump is your president. Mm. Wow, we fucked up. Like we fucked up in the past, but we really fucked up. Well, do you guys remember the war on drugs? Yeah, Nancy yeah. Reagan. Okay. Mm -hmm. That shit was some bullshit, okay? It was a way of filling up our jails with black people. Yep. Exactly. So they're reigniting the war on drugs and they're starting with marijuana. And I'm like, okay, wait, hold on one second here. Didn't we just legalize this shit? Isn't it being legalized like yeah. nationwide? It's cr it's a dangerous gateway drug. No, the fuck it's not. Well, there's federal it rights for women who want to have abortions, but he just signed a bill secretly preventing federal funding into states that don't want to fund Planned Parenthood or for uh, pregnancies. Yeah. Uh, termination of pregnancies. Mm. Yeah. This is a crazy ass motherfucker. It really is. It's going down. It really is. And speaking of cray cray, <laughs> speaking of cray cray, Steve Stevens, whose mother obviously hated him because she named him Steven Stevens, um, mm. is the general, you know, is the guy, the crazy motherfucker who shot Robert Goodwin, who was senior. I don't want to mistake that. Um, 74 year old man. 73, yeah. 74 year old man. I, you asked me if I watched the video. I watched up until he walked up to him and there was no way that I could continue watching it because I know that I cannot watch somebody be murdered. I, I, I would never want to see something like that voluntarily. So Floyd has this debate that you've been a part of. You've been mm -hmm. there where we've talked about Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Floyd and I have different views on different things. I am pro Black Lives Matter, pro mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Trayvon Martin movement, all of that, because I did the Trayvon Martin movement. Um, and I'm still friends with his mother. Floyd's perspective is... All lives matter. He said it publicly. All right. lives matter. Yeah. And I agree that conceptually all lives matter. But I've said that black lives matter because right now they don't matter as much. Mm -hmm. Right. Then you see this video mm -hmm. where this guy, black guy, mm -hmm. walks up to this old man, makes him say the name of his ex-girlfriend. This guy don't know nothing about whatever he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He says the girl's name. I watched the whole video. Because mm -hmm. my, my team sent it to me and said, should we put it on Hollywood Unlocked? Mm -hmm. Of course, I said no. Mm -hmm. I look at this thing and then he puts the gun up and shoots the man in the head and f goes over him, showing him laying out dead on Easter Sunday mm -hmm. and then gets back in his car and says he's committing all these other murders. But I, I said, that, so I took the link and I sent it to Floyd and I said, I understand your perspective on how Black Lives Matter has that internal conflict mm -hmm. where you have the violence in Chicago, you have the bloods and cribs, mm -hmm. you have the dark skin, light skin, the mm -hmm. this, the that. You have all the hate amongst the black community and we hold white, America and non-black America or the world to a standard that we don't hold ourselves to. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking like this man killed this innocent 
man, this man lived 74 full years to mm-hmm. die like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did. I couldn't even. I, I was literally fucked up for two full days. So Floyd called and was just like shocked. We had a whole conversation about it. It was just like this is the craziest thing I probably have ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is, there is no wrapping your brain around it because it was all kinds of fucked up. It was horrible. Um, the and crazy part. Did you hear what his kid said? No. Wow. Two of his daughters went on the news mm-hmm. and said they forgive him. Not only forgive him but they are praying for him. And I want to say they even went as far as saying they wanted to wrap their arms around him. Well, that's what a lot of the family members of- Fuck that shit. So that's what a lot of the family members of the people that were gunned down by Dylan Roof in that church in South Carolina Mm -hmm. have publicly said is that they don't condemn him, that they, you know, their heart goes out to them, to him and they're praying for him. He in turn says, fuck you, N-I-G-G-E-R-S. And I'm not sorry. You know, for some people, for- one of his other daughters said, "Fuck that! I wanted him no, to die at a hundred bu- with a hundred bullets hitting his body or whatever." Right. Listen, ended up committing suicide. Who? Punk shit. The guy. Oh, oh Steve Stevens. 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 Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I mean, there was a five state wide manhunt. They couldn't find him. Um. And then he ended up, you know, killing himself. Body found. You know, tragedy over. But still, it's left us with a. Where's the humanity? Like, where are we? You know. Well, I would say that for those people out there that say, you know, you should forgive and the Lord says you forgive. Yeah, that's it. But the Lord also said an eye for an eye. And I'll be honest with you. When my brother died, you couldn't make me want to wrap my arms around the person that did that. I just, Mm -hmm. I don't get it. But I would say, you know, I read some comments online where people were like, oh, Jason's critical of the black community. Absolutely. I should be able to be critical of my people. Mm -hmm. I'm black. I claim I'm black. Of Mm -hmm. course, I Mm -hmm. may look Puerto Rican and I may date Dominican, but I'm black. (laughs) Okay, but at the end of the day, like we have to step up and take more responsibility. We have to stop saying white people can't say nigga, but we say nigga. We have to mm-hmm. stop saying light is better than dark or dark is, you know, stronger than light or whatever. Like all that right. shit is crazy. Mm. I don't understand how a person could kill an innocent person like that. But the crazy part is this shit happens every day. It yeah. does. Yeah. It, def- it definitely does. It yep. definitely does. And it's, it's really sad. Um, so there's really nothing to say about that other than to offer our condolences to the, um, family. the Goodwin the family. family. Yeah. And to everybody affected by it. And I had exactly. to watch that because it went viral. It was everywhere. And it's crazy how on social media, there's this whole discussion now where if you put up somebody's music, it gets taken down right away. But uh-huh. a murder like that was everywhere it stayed on. I absolutely yeah. agree yeah. with that. That shit is disgusting. It, I, as far as I'm concerned, you witness something like that and that whether you are able to acknowledge it or not, that is a traumatic situation that you're internalizing. That is a ne- mm. that is a level of negativity you, that you're that, allowing. That, that to- image will be in your mind. Exactly, right. that is a level of negativity that you should not welcome into your spirit and your soul. That's that's just my opinion. That's why I chose not to watch it because I never want to voluntarily see something like that because you can't unsee it. Yeah, right. and I just don't want to deal with the effects of how how that you know, makes me feel like yeah. who knows? Who, I could just downward spiral into a massive depression. And you got to peel me off the fucking floor. Like Geo the other day, I don't <laughs> need that shit. <laughs> well, let me say it, that was sad. So we sent our condolences. There's two announcements I want to put out there in terms of media before we leave. Okay. Okay. One, shout out to Charlemagne the God who was on The View. Oh yeah. We get, Charlemagne's a friend of ours. We get compared to The Breakfast Club a lot. And I really look at that as a compliment because it is yeah. the hottest show on the air right mm-hmm. now. And um, although I don't believe we're just like the Breakfast Club, I, I definitely see the differences. It's a it's a compliment to mm-hmm. give us that attribution. But I text Charlemagne this morning. I was just like, "Yo, bro, like um, much respect and keep pushing the culture forward because you're mm-hmm. you're you're doing it and mm-hmm. you deserve it. Mm-hmm. Because if you know Charlemagne's history from Wendy Williams to mm-hmm. Philadelphia to mm-hmm. being fired on the radio mm-hmm. to all the struggle he's had at rebranding and getting back mm-hmm. on the air and becoming the at the top of the game, he deserves it. Mm-hmm. And so it's good mm-hmm. to see him winning. And the other news is that Bill O'Reilly has been fired from Fox. Oh, thank I heard. God. I heard. But here's, but here's the, sorry, I just, th- Charlemagne, love you. He's one of my closest friends. He's going to be here in LA. Motherfucker, um, you better come on our show. Too. Doing a book signing. <laughs> love you, um, but don't fucking play us because you up there with the white people and Whoopi Goldberg. Nigga, the, bring your black ass Hillary Clinton ass interviewing ass right here in this motherfucking chair. The book is called Black but Privilege. You should definitely go pick it up because he is dropping some 
gems. Um, but here's another way of looking at the, the Bill Riley situation. Yeah, he's been fired from Fox and he's a fucking douchebag. But you know what he is? He is an extraordinarily wealthy man who's going to continue to write books. He's going to find yeah. a platform. Podcast. This is, yeah, he, it's not over for him. No, it's not. I mean, like being fired from Fox, he'll be back. Well, That's the worst part. Tommy Loren has also been fired from The Blaze. Oh, thank mm-hmm. God. Those two hook up and create a show together. Whoa. It's over. Well, I ain't thinking about that. She better, she better put her hand over her pussy. All I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's okay. She believes in abortion, so if something mm. happens, you know, she can take care of it. <laughs> we are all kinds of fucked up today. <laughs> so it's crazy, but uh, and you know what else I saw today on the mm. view is that Bully, Billy Bush from Access Hollywood yeah. is is online begging for a job because he's still unemployed from that video. He is George Bush's nephew. How can he not get a is job? He? Yes. Mm. Okay, but listen. Not only does he need a job. But the motherfucker in the video with him became the president. I can't. Wow. I can't. How did exactly? How does Billy Bush power, lose his job? Power and money matter in this country. Lose his mm. job just for like encouraging the conversation, but not saying the her, right. you know the horrible things that Donald. But Donald and Trump goes on. And then the Cheeto to, becomes the president. Exactly. <laughs> the Cheeto. Exactly. Because that's exactly what he looks like a Cheeto. Damn. Fucking baboon. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, that's all I got to give today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm all prepped out. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Anytime. I, man, I know anytime. Gio appreciates you keeping his seat warm. Yeah, yeah, he always. Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'm going to sit in his other seat next time. I don't care what y'all say. But okay. no, I'm glad y'all had me, though. It's been a while since I've been here. Yeah. I was up here. It was dope. Y'all went real political on me. I ain't a political guy, but yeah, I got it. <laughs> you know, but here's the thing. It's not, nobody really was p- political. Right. And like for everybody criticizing me on like, you know, calling Trump this and whatever, somebody actually called me a racist and said I was a Trump supporter. I was like, do you actually listen this to is, the show? But this is what I think is funny. I'm and not a politician, this, but, but think, everybody's interested this in is politics what I think that's now. Interesting. One. Like Spank said earlier, people may have an image of you from what they've seen in the past, mm-hmm. whether it's the video days, whether mm-hmm. it's the reality show days, whether it's whatever. We know you intimately and personally, so we know how smart you are, how fact-based you are, how diverse you are. You smoke weed, you fuck around with rappers, but you like the white man at the in Essex too. <laughs> um, but the thing I, I've just learned, like we literally have to laugh at the critics because like they still tune in every day. It's mm-hmm. the same people commenting. But legit question, yeah. can I be a racist? I'm half black and half white from the most one of the most liberal countries in the entire world. I think black people are naturally the most racist people in the fucking world. But my, grandma, also- my grandmother, she's be like, you light skinned niggas could have never been picking cotton in Mississippi with us. <laughs> Y'all niggas too pretty. Your hands are too nice. You, you broke motherfucker. Like for real. But sh- I'm half white. My my my, look gra- black though. my that, white look my, black though. No, but it was a black girl calling me a racist. My oh. I was like, wait, listen, what? black people can be racist. My grandmother who was white, may she recipes. That bitch was evil. <laughs> she used to tell me all the time. I don't know why my daughter um, fucked your black daddy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Little nigger, get in here. Uh. <laughs> my stepmother called me nigger and my grandmother called me nigger, black and white. I thought my name was Jason Lee nigger. <laughs> you know? So at the end of the day, like, I think black people, you know, I don't think we could be racist. People say I'm overly critical of black people. Yeah, I am because they my people. Right. And I look at my people like, okay, let's just strip all the emotion down. We all want to be up here with these motherfuckers, but we steadily bring each other down here. Mm-hmm. Even with what's happening right now with Hollywood and Lock, I see people and the same people that was hating on me before are now cheering me on, but you didn't believe in me before you saw it because you had to see it right. to believe yeah. it. Yeah. Right. yeah, you know, yeah, it's the same thing. I was I was looking in um, Charlemagne's comments, you know, about the book and, you know, him being on Stephen Colbert and then The View and stuff like that. All positive, all positive. I'm like, you fucking bandwagon jumpers mm-hmm. you always come for fucking everybody Charlie. hit him huh? now everybody. i don't know now i don't know if he bleaching his skin but the brother's skin looks good oh no he definitely did something okay because that them, skin he, he got them dark patches out there them dark patches is gone yeah Ari spears need to holler at him <laughs> his, his dark patches out but he might got a couple more Ari spears <laughs> Ari spears need to be backstroking in that motherfucking crane <laughs> oh my god I said Charlemagne went on The View. I saw a couple extra lighter spots. That motherfucking makeup artist is an Emmy Award winning makeup artist. Charlemagne looked good with your little church suit on too, Deacon. He, Better bring your Deacon ass up in here. Char did look handsome. He did. He did. And he Angela did. Yee's co-hosting The View. I mean, uh, the, the, the Real this week. The real. So, I know. Yeah, they're winning. They're doing. I'm, they're doing I'm really thing. proud of them because I, I do know personally where they started from and mm-hmm. where they are now. And it's just, it's awesome to see your friends winning. Like it's so Yeah, I got cool dope. with Charlemagne in Philly when he was doing radio in Philly. I was living there. Yeah. I remember when he got fired. Yeah. It was funny, but it wasn't funny because he got fired. <laughs> Wait, can I just say that? I've never in my life 
looked at anybody and hated on them. Never. Mm. I've never looked at the shade room and said, they got more followers. Fuck them. I've never looked at baller alert and said, oh, they're in the clubs branding them. So fuck them. I've never mm-hmm. looked at a competitor right. and said, I'm jealous. I've never hated or nothing. I will say that I've looked at all of them and said, I want to learn what each of them are doing right. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to yeah. do it better than right. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I tell my team all the time because my team sometimes gets consumed with everything that everybody else. Do. Mm-hmm. Put your blinders on and run your race yeah. the best you can. Fuck yeah. everybody else. Mm-hmm. Because there's things we have that they don't have. But I've never been a hater. And I look at people who hate on Charlemagne and who talk about it. that is a bold, fearless motherfucker. He says what the fuck he wants. He'll yep. go to lunch with Tommy Loren, yep. criticize her the next day on his show. He, I mean, he's doing his thing. Mm-hmm. So shout out to him. I'm proud of him. I'm learning from him. And like I said, you deserve everything. So right now we deserve to get the fuck out of here. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. All right, y'all. We out of here.